Kim Kardashian ruined my life and many more. We need to boycott all Kardashian Jenner products and sponsors. Like I've said before, stop buying their products, watching their shows, or liking their posts. Tell their sponsors how you feel. There are countless examples of people who use the combination of money, the legal framework, and a complete lack of empathy for taking advantage of others. Elizabeth Holmes used her legal team to aggressively silence whistleblowers who raised concern over her fake blood testing technology. And one of these potential whistleblowers attempted to kill himself. Martin Shkreli once bought up the IP for a life-saving drug and jacked up the prices 5,000%. Monsanto aggressively uses patent enforcement practices to force small farmers in India from saving seeds for replanting to force them to buy new seeds every year, leading to increased costs. I can go on, but today's person of interest is the queen of being famous for being famous. He's hotel like everything that you booked me in Miami has been the worst hotel ever so like you're so annoying it's like shut up you're the negative one just saying how awful we are and how this you're like a big bully back in 2015 Kim Kardashian launched an app that stormed the digital world raking in millions within minutes of its release but beneath the facade of this booming business lays a story of deceit that began unfolding in 2019 our tale spirals around Kimoji, an app that painted our chats with a Kardashian flair. David, the brains behind it, claims he was the original wizard of this emoji Oz, only to have his yellow brick road crumble beneath Kim's stilettos. Let's dive in. Meet David Liebenson, a dedicated tech entrepreneur. Back in 2014, he co-founded an app named Sensorgram. This app was the first of its kind, allowing users to weed out unwanted comments from their Instagram posts by filtering out certain keywords, emojis, or phrases. The app quickly gained traction, capturing the attention of thousands. And given the cyber vitriol celebrities often face, it wasn't long before Kim Kardashian, a very public figure who people often love to hate, took interest in such an app. Shortly after, Kim's friend and social media assistant, Jonathan Chaban, reached out to David and his team, telling them that Kim was interested in partnering with their already running app. Thrilled at the prospect, David was soon on a call with Kim discussing the potential partnership. The discussions led to an invitation to Calabasas where David and his team met with Kim, Kris Jenner, and their legal advisors. During the meeting, a verbal agreement was made for a 60-40 split on Sensorgram. David and his team, seizing the moment, pitched another idea, Kimoji, an app filled with Kardashian-themed emojis. Kim and Chris were on board, agreeing to a 50-50 partnership. The sky seemed to be the limit, but little did David know a storm was brewing on the horizon. Soon after they left, the storm clouds gathered. Kim called David with questions about the trademark filings and generously offered her team's help. So after a few minutes, her team secured the trademark. This was a precursor to a heart-wrenching betrayal. And just five minutes post securing the trademark, Kim dials again. This time, her voice trembles with shock as she utters, Who's Ryan? A reference to David's partner. Who, in an unexpected twist, had sneakily captured a snippet from the Sensorgram app showing some words used by Kim and shared it with a buddy. Just a small break, no user handle or private info leaked. The screenshot through a twisted chain of acquaintances found its way to the inner circles of Kim and Kanye's world. This staged accusation of a breach in privacy against one of David's partners was the loophole Kim allegedly used to back out of the deal, which she used to launch Kimoji on her own. In David's view, it didn't seem like it was all just simply a coincidence. Then came the legal hammer. A threat loomed of a $5 million lawsuit against each of them if they didn't give up the Kimoji trademark and the rights to the Sensorgram app. Give us whatever you got, and if it doesn't make sense for you to be involved, we have this in our pocket to get you out of the picture if we want. We have all the time and all of the resources to burn them to the ground. They were young and they were frightened. This threat sent shockwaves through David's team. Two members succumbed to the pressure, signing the rights away. David, however, smelled a rat and resisted. But the damage was done. Kim's Kimoji app soared, raking in millions, while David's investment in Sensorgram crumbled into dust. His life savings evaporated, personal relationships strained, and a once-promising tech career now laid in tatters. 
The $1.99 Kimoji app took off with more than 9,000 downloads per second, according to various reports. Kim even took to Twitter to claim that the demand for her Kimojis was so great that it crashed Apple's app site. Kim's ex-husband, Kanye West, even made the song Facts on how Kimoji raked in millions within minutes. It's like putting salt to a wound, a cruel reminder of what could have been. Each verse a sting, each mention a jab at the lost opportunity, the lost fortune, the lost dreams. They watched helplessly as billboard after billboard, article after article, hailed the Kardashian family's business acumen. But the story doesn't end there. David also alleged that Kim interfered with a patent he had filed, which later mysteriously found its way into Instagram settings. Although David doesn't provide any evidence on what happened with Instagram, he seems suspicious that she may have used his patents to do a larger deal with Instagram, saying that Kim had discussions with the former CEO of Instagram, Kevin Systrom, after signing the NDA with David and his team. The coincidences seem too many, the losses too big, and the silence from Kim's camp was just too loud. David didn't back down. A hefty lawsuit of $100 million was slapped against Kim in 2019. Now, the Kardashians are no stranger to scandals. Their whole life revolves around drama. In fact, it was a scandal that brought them into the spotlight that they indulge to this day. So it's no shocker how well they handle these things. Undeterred, David took to the digital world, laying out his story on a website titled Kim K ruined my life just so she could have her face and butt as an emoji. He detailed the ordeals that followed the lawsuit, which ranged from financial ruin to sleeping in his car. David now finds himself in a stark reality. Far from the glitz and grammar of Calabasas, his days are now a grinding marathon, juggling three jobs while finding solace in his car. His weeks are a non-stop whirl, working seven days to rebuild the life that was once full of promise. He filed a lawsuit seeking justice for the deceit. However, fate dealt another cruel hand. Mismanagement by his ex-attorney led to a dead end, with no resolution in sight. And then the Kardashian legal juggernaut swung into action. They threatened David with a whopping $400,000 in legal fees from an arbitration that he was never a part of. It was a silencing tactic designed to be a hefty price on David's voice. But he's ready to raise that voice again, and according to him, the lawsuit can be refiled, but at a staggering cost. David has tirelessly worked building a social presence, sharing his story, and gathering support to fight the behemoth that the Kardashian empire represents. If there's one thing we could take away from the Kardashian leaving Sin Sega, it's that sometimes the legal system feels less like justice for all and more like a playground for those with deeper pockets. A patent, by definition, should be something innovative, not just an obvious evolution of a filter feature. And creating your own emojis, well, let's just say I could doodle a Steve emoji in my sleep, and I'm not sure that suggesting someone create their own branded emojis is IP that anyone should own. But what's really on trial here isn't whether a filtered comment or a Kim K emoji is patent worthy. It's the terrifying imbalance of power between David and Goliath, the little guys and the corporate giants. Governments brought anti-slap laws into the fray precisely to prevent these financial playground bully tactics in defamation cases. Yet, ironically, slapping an anti-slap might as well require the GDP of a small country. Some might cheekily say, why not counter sue? Oh please, that's like advising a minnow to take on a shark in a game of hide and seek. Most folks don't have a personal attorney on speed dial or the time and energy to get embroiled in a multi-year long legal saga. So what's the solution? Perhaps to sprinkle a common sense and a dash of legal reform to ensure that the law isn't just a tool for the wealthy to swat away pesky flies. Instead, let's ensure it remains a beacon of justice, not just a weapon for those willing to flex their bank accounts. Because let's face it, not all of us can be famous for being, well, famous. And when you're out here in the real world, you need more than just a pretty face to have your back. All right, everybody, thank you for watching. If you could do me a big favor, please hit that like button, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Let me know what you think in the comment section. So guys, we just recently launched this channel and we noticed that 99.9% .9 of our viewers are not subscribed. So if you enjoyed this video, we need your help in growing this channel. By subscribing, that would help us keep the lights on and make sure that our crews have jobs in these uncertain times. So please hit that subscribe button and we promise to make more quality videos that I'm sure you're gonna love.